Nail by Ian Jones and Andy Edwards. Episode 6 Fire Watchers. Saturday, March the 28th, 1942. Nail comes clean to Maggie about his role with the LDV Auxiliary Patrol. It felt like the right time for honesty after his conversation with Becca yesterday. He and I are out on night patrol again and have a chance meeting with a good friend. There are rumours of sad news and a shock for Di. I told Maggie last night about the auxiliaries, you know. Yeah. Couldn't lie to her any more. We were coached up in bed with a hot water bottle. King and country is one thing I thought to myself. But lying to the person you love is another. The truth must be better than lies, no matter what. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before, I said. He made me sign the official secret act, man. All sounds very serious, she said. I thought there was something going on. And thanks for telling me, darling. At least I understand now. Then she kissed me. On the forehead. No star, my lovely, she said. Night, night. I felt much better this evening when I was heading out. You off rabbiting with die again? She smiled as I left and winked at me. Ah, yes, right, I said. Be careful, Enbach. See you in the morning, Zed. Ah, in the morning, I say, ta ta. I had to own up to die about telling Maggie. I couldn't lie to her any more, die, I said. He looked over his shoulder, then back to me. Listen, he whispered. I told Philly ages ago. I can't pull a wool over her eyes. She's too bloody sharp for me. As if Margaret or, or her going to tell anyone anyway. Bloody nonsense. Well, I hope they don't say... Or you and me are for the high jump, I tell him. Don't even joke about it, Neil. We walk through the woods, out into the rugby ground at the top of Picton Hill. He'd just finished a patrol above Bulk Farm, we have. Setting up an ambush point for when the invasion comes. We walk a few yards into the field. Oh, I can't hold on any longer, I says. I'm going to have to strain my greens. I laugh. Strain you what, eh? Strain my greens, man. Have a peach, he says seriously. I laugh again and he walks back to the tree line to relieve himself. I carry on walking over the rugby pitch. I'll see you at the top of Picton Hill Terrace, I say. I'll wait on the bench. As I walk through the field, I look around and see the steam rising in the light of his torch. Looks like he's smoking a pipe. I rest on the slatted wooden bench looking over the village. It's moonless and I can see a few streetlights in Pontero twinkling below us. Beyond the village, the valley is as black as anthracite. And through the silent darkness, I can just make out the sound of the Ishmael bubbling and fizzing over the run below the churchyard. After a minute or so, I hear a die coming across the field as he squelches through the mud. Oh, my feet are flipping freezing, he says as he sits down next to me. I think i got a hole in my boot. Better go and see Briggs then, I say mischievously. I wouldn't go and see him if I had to walk to Aberish my barefoot over hot coals. I'll take him to Camarthen on Wednesday and drop him in with Trevor Thomas in Morley Street. Costs a bit more, but at least he'll do a proper job and he's a good old boy. I nod in agreement. Remember Howard's feet after his wedding, I say. Swollen up like two balloons they were. Poor old Howard, says Di. Still can hardly believe she poisoned him. Poisoned them all? Evil woman, Neil. Poor evil. I think about what Maggie said, but hold my tongue. They're exhuming her first husband in Cardiff as well now, he says. 
Reckon she probably did him in too. Hard to take her in, to be honest. Philly mortified. They were close, you know. Aye, I know, I say. Maggie was fond of her as well. Got quite upset, she did, when she heard they're going to hang her. An owl hoots behind us in the woods. That was a decent job tonight, Nail says Di. They'll never get past there without us getting a clear shot at them. I agree. Aye. Hopefully we don't have to use it or die. Aye. Hopefully, he replies. Do you think that's right about Bryn? I asks. Nosey Owens reckons he was killed in Crete. Well, nothing's been confirmed yet, does it? Maybe a mistake. Remember that game against Brian Wine, eh? A few years back. Bryn charging like a war horse and Kipper scoring a winning try. Our deaf cheating. Seems like yesterday. I smile as I remember the commotion. Perhaps he'll be all right now, I say. Missing in action or something. Rather than, you know, well, you, you know. Knows he seemed pretty sure of himself, Neil. Don't know where he got it from, but I hope he's wrong. Norbert will be devastated. And Francis on her own with her twins. Poor little dabs, eh? Not right grown up without a father. There's a few moments silence and I can I can hear the river again. How's Verdun now, Neil? Does he still cry at night? I asks. Not so much now, Di, to be honest. I don't think he wants me hearing him, see. Probably didn't worry so much when it was just Maggie in the house, but probably owns it in a bit more now I'm there. Stopped wetting the bed anyway. Oh, time's a great healer, Neil. Yeah, learn to cope with things you do, I say. We all do, I suppose. Does it make him go away, mind? You are braver than you believe, Maggie said to him. Stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. She's got a way with her, you know. Calms everything down. Peaceful, like. A car drives up Picton Hill towards us and the light shine in our faces. Doesn't seem like a year since the Blitz, does it, says Di. Can remember sitting up here watching it. It was like yesterday. Sky all lit up and the noise of those bombs. Three nights of it. Poor old Swansea Jacks, eh? Docks were in smithereens, hundreds dead. Ernie was telling me that his cousin's girl was in school a few days before the Blitz, when the siren went off, I say. She was only five. All the children ran to the Anderson, but she decided to walk home on her own. I'm not saying it was far, mind. A couple hundred yards, you know. She walked all the way back to her mother's house, knocked on the shelter in the garden. They couldn't believe it when they opened the hatch. Standing there as calm as you like she was. I hadn't realised there was a shelter at the school, see? So she just came home. When the all clear went, they took her back to school. None of the teachers had even noticed she wasn't there. <laughs> Makes you think, mind, doesn't it? Is that you, boys? Comes a voice out of the darkness. Merv, man, says Di. What the hell are you doing creeping around in the dark like a... Like a, oh, I don't know, like a night creeper or something. A night creeper, Di? What the hell's that? Oh, I, I don't know. Anyway, what are you doing, Merv? I could ask you two the same question. I've been up in that last when went to see Bryn's father. Nosy your wens, spreading rumours, so I thought I'd take a walk over. Yeah, and, I say, what did he say? It's not good, says Merv solemnly. Missing in action. They've sold him. Suspected lost. 
Oh, Jesus, I say. Poor Francis, eh? Kip will be devastated too, says Di. Where is he to now? North Africa, last I heard, says Merv. Fighting the eye ties, I think. He joins us on the bench. At least Kyo's okay, says Merv. He's in Plymouth, apparently, running ashore for a few days. Totter rum, boys. He pulls a bottle of pusses from his coat. We all take a slug. What are you doing up here, then, he asks. You never said. Oh, rabbiting, says Di. Where are they, then? I fancy a rabbit. Don't tell me you haven't got any now, because I don't believe you. Di hesitates. Oh, oh, only been laying the snares, Merv, I say. Coming back in the morning to get them. Ah, right, he says. Fair enough, I suppose. I look at Di in the half-light. He says nothing. It's easier to lie to Merv than Maggie, I think to myself. We were just talking about the Blitz in Swansea last year, I say. Oh, bloody carnage, says Merv. It was like the sky was on fire on a Saturday night, I tell you. Those observer caught in Pembrey have got a few questions to answer. Left the Luftwaffe to it, says Di in agreement. Talking about Swansea, how did your trip go yesterday, boy? Did you get to meet your buddy's wife and boy? I did, Di, I reply. It's hard to be honest, Merv. Uh, upset then, like. But I'm glad I went. It's done now. Maggie was a big help. Couldn't have done it without her. We all take another slug of Merv's rum. Merv coughs. I heard Arthur two donkeys has been arrested. What? Get away, Merv. What's he been arrested for? Says Di, sounding worried. Bit of a strange one, Di. Eddie the ship told me last night. Apparently, they've arrested him for wrestling pigs. What? I say disbelievingly. Aye, I know. I couldn't believe it either when Eddie told me. Are you sure, Merv, Di says? You can't get arrested for wrestling pigs? Hold on, Merv, I say. Not pig wrestling, man. Pig rustling. Uh, stealing pigs, you bloody idiot. Merv folds his arms. Don't call me idiot, Neil. That's what I said. Pig rustling. Well, I laugh and look at Di. He's not laughing. His face is as serious as I've ever seen it. I'm off, he says suddenly and jumps to his feet. I gotta go to the shop. And he disappears into the darkness and down the hill. What's got into him, Neil? Well, you spooked him, Merv, with your talk about Arthur two donkeys. He's got half a pig in his cold room and God knows how many boxes of bacon. He's probably going to make him disappear sharpish. Never had died down as a contraband pirate, Merv says and laughs to himself. Sixteen faggots on a dead man's chest. A yo-ho-ho ho, and a bottle of sauce. He laughs even louder. Then changes the subject again. Likes to do that, Merv. Every sentence is about something different with him half the time. Saw banana when I was in that last nail. You never did, I said. Genuinely? I haven't seen one for years. Strike me down if I'm lying, he said sincerely. Only the one, mind. Neighbour brought it in for us to see when we was having a chat. Apparently, most of the kids in the village have been to look at it. Most of them hadn't seen an Anna before. Thought they were imaginary, you know. Made up, you know, like, like cowboys and Indians or something. Cowboys and Indians aren't made up, Merv, I say. He pauses. Well, like, uh, like sea horses then, he says. I say nothing this time. Going to have it for his tea tomorrow, apparently, with milk and sugar. Agreed to wait another day because some of the kids haven't had a look at it yet. Fair play to him. I could do with eating something soft myself, I say. I've been cleaning my teeth with baking powder the last week or two. My gums are bleeding all the time. I think I'll have to stop using it for a bit. Merv is in like a shot. 
When I was in the Navy, he says, we walk down Picton Hill, while he regales me with tales of caustic soda, natural sponge and shark's teeth. As we reach the village, there's a rumble of aircraft overhead. One of ours, Merv asks. Dunno, I reply. Hope so. As we reach the square, Dai's van speeds past and disappears into the night.